Okay, so stability. Um, first, stability versus control. Now we looked at control last time, but these two things are in permanent conflict, if you like. If I had um, lots of stability, I'm not going to get much control. If I have lots of control, I'm going to have very much less stability. Uh, and control, we really move, mean maneuverability. So if we just look at, if we had a continuum, if you like, so we had um, stab at one end and control at the other end and that was a long line between the two notice they're opposite ends of the line so if you want the stability then you don't have control if you want control then you don't have stability it's a bit of a how much do you want so most of, with our airliners what we want is lots of stability really we need to control the airplane but we're not going to be doing aerobatics so we will probably have be somewhere more or less where I put that cross. If you're fight, um, flying a fighter aircraft where you need a lot of maneuverability, then the design would probably err towards having lots of control but less stability. And modern fighters are designed such actually they're not stable. Um, and the, the compute the stability is actually gained via computer rather than the uh, aerodynamics so it's a different way of achieving stability if you like okay so just have some terminology for us to look at so uh, first longitudinal axis so the one there to there is stabilized in pitch so stability pitch stability if you like if we talk about lateral axis which is this one stabilized in roll and obviously for the last one, our normal axis, which is the vertical one that we can't see there, stabilized in your. Okay, so we've got those three axes that we're playing with. And what do we mean by stability? Well, stability is basically how the airplane responds to a disturbance. So you might be flying along and a gust comes along and say increases alpha like that. What does the airplane do? in response to that. Um, and what we're looking for is the aeroplane would actually put the nose back down and continue along its journey. If it uh, got knocked up and then went up like that, that would be disastrous. We really, that would be unstable. We don't want that. What we want is to come back. And most of the time it gets knocked up, it comes back, but it doesn't come back like that. It comes back with a slight oscillation and then eventually settles back down. Um, so stability is a measure of the aircraft's response to a disturbance, if you like. Um, and we can generally consider that response in two ways. So we can have what we call static stability. And static stability is about our initial response, if you like. What, what does the airplane do? Does it head off in the right direction? So in this one where I got disturbed knocking up, is the initial response to put the nose down? or is the initial response to go and do something else? It could be to put the nose up, it could be to make the nose go left or right. Um, you never know. But we're looking for it, what it is. And then we got the other one is dynamic stability, which largely I'll look at that as where do we end up? Do we end up in the right place or not? Um, but it's how the aircraft behaves after the initial response. So that would be there. So next then we're going to be looking at each of these, the dynamic, the static and um, dynamic, but each of those can be viewed in three ways. I'm going to draw, I think, I think you've seen it all before, I think I didn't realise until the other day you also get it in instruments. So if I had a, a bowl, and I not a very good shaped bowl, so my ball would actually be there, wouldn't it, in this bowl. But if I displace the ball and moved it up there somewhere, then I think you will all agree <coughs> that the ball would move down, it would go beyond its point and it would just oscillate and eventually it would end up there. So the fact that the ball, the first response is to go back in the right direction, we could say then that it has static stability, positive static stability. 
and that the ball eventually ends up in the right place, we can say that it also has dynamic stability. But if I had a flat plate like that, uh, maybe a bit longer than that, but I had a ball and then I disturbed the ball so that it rolled over to there. Now friction would make the ball stop, so it's not going to roll forever. Um, and then it stops. But it's not showing any inclination to return, so it doesn't have static stability. But neither is it trying to go further away. So it doesn't have, um, so it's not unstable. It's just what we call neutrally stable. In, in static. And obviously that, the, <clears throat> if we look at dynamic stability there's no way it's going to end up back in the original position. <clears throat> Therefore we don't have dynamic stability either. In that case that would be neutral too. Um, and one thing we'll see as we go on is that you cannot have dynamic stability unless it is preceded by static stability. And then if I had a bowl and put it up the other way and if I were really clever and were able to, <coughs> I'm losing my voice here, able to balance the ball on the top and then if I just touched it I think you'll all agree the ball would just shoo, roll off like that. First response is to go farther and further away, it's not to actually return back and it would never return back. So in that case in terms of static stability it would be unstable and clearly if it's unstable, I, in static, I cannot have dynamic stability. <clears throat>